I have always had a particular feeling, and I'm not sure exactly why, uh, that public service is a calling, it's a high calling, and it is something worth doing. When I grew up uh, and I was in high school, it was the Watergate era, and government was not being held in high repute among the public of this country, and that struck me as a problem then, and I think it's still a problem now. Uh, the notion that people should want to be engaged in leadership in the public arena and helping to make decisions that shape all of our lives uh, and see to it that this country continues on uh, the plane of, of progress and excellence that uh, people put us on many years ago through dint of great effort and great toil. Uh, that has always seemed to me to be a, a great way to spend uh, whatever portion of your life you're lucky enough to spend it. Uh, but uh, when I was, uh, as was mentioned, uh, in college, uh, I had a term where I was expecting we were on quarters then, which meant we had exams three times a year, not twice. We feel we worked very hard. We also walked to school through the snow for seven, seven <laughs> miles in the bare feet. Uh, but uh, I wanted to come to Washington for, for a quarter, uh, which I was uh, required to do a field experience, and I wanted to work in particular for Senator John Glenn. And I pushed really hard to get that opportunity, uh, uh, which ultimately I was able to do unpaid, so I think he probably thought, oh, what the heck. Uh, uh, but anyway, I got a chance to work in his office, and there was a highlight of that experience was always there would be one day during your time there where you would get to actually shadow the senator and spend most of the day with him. And it included going back and forth to the floor on that occasion and sitting in on meetings uh, that I probably had no business being in, uh, and otherwise getting a chance to just see him in action. Uh, and it was exactly what I would have expected with, with Senator Glenn, as many of you uh, have come to know well. What you see is what you get. He's very straightforward, uh, very, very honest, sincere, and plain spoken. And I understood that because my father grew up in Muskingum County, Ohio, in the same area as, as Senator Glenn. My father grew up in Dresden. Uh, John Glenn grew up in New Concord. He and, he and Annie both. Uh, and there, there's a type of person from, from that era, area that uh, I all, have always respected and admired. Uh, and my father is now 96, uh, still uh, with us and very much with it, uh, a huge Cincinnati Reds fan. Uh, and I know both Lewis and Stan are big Reds fans. Maybe Jack is too, although he's more of a Buckeye fan, as best I can tell. Uh, so, in any event, uh, I got a chance to be part of the original John Glenn School of, of Learning as an intern in his office uh, in Washington. That was the year, spring of 1980. It was the year where uh, Senator Glenn was up for his first re-election uh, bid, uh, having uh, actually had a, a more tortuous path into the U.S. Senate than anybody might have expected in retrospect. Uh, had these, these amazing battles with Howard Metzenbaum, uh, in that era, and, and finally uh, attained the Senate seat in 1974, was up for re-election in 1980. And by then, his uh, public service had been so well recognized and renowned that, if, as I recall, I believe he won all 88 counties in Ohio in his re-election bid, which I think has not been done uh, before or since. So uh, a testament to how people held him in, in high regard. Uh, I also uh, had the opportunity, a friend of mine that worked for me when I was the state treasurer was going through the Glenn School at night, uh, and he invited me up to speak to his class one evening, so I kind of casually uh, made my way up to Ohio State to speak to the class, and lo and behold, to my surprise, I'd had no inkling of this, I'm not sure my friend uh, who was the student at the time had either both Senator and Mrs. Glenn were there for my little lecture, which uh, improved considerably uh, right on the spot. Uh, but it, it was indicative of, and many of you know this and have seen this, about his, his real you know, a passionate, both of their real passionate involvement with the school. It is not just something they put their name on and leave to others to do. They're very involved in it. It is, it is essentially a living testimonial to his commitment to public service. And the, the Glenn School is so fortunate to have had uh, that involvement for all this time. 
uh, and, and we hope for a long time into the future. I'll also tell a couple stories from uh, in, in both 2008 and then in 2010. Uh, there were some wonderful days where Senator Glenn uh, agreed to come out and campaign uh, with some of us uh, around the state. Uh, and I got a chance to actually get to know him a little more and talk to him uh, between uh, stops on the bus and found, as I mentioned earlier tonight, that like my father, and there must be something in the water in that part of the state, uh, he could recite uh, from memory considerable stanzas of poetry from many, many years uh, before he, re he regaled us with uh, quite a bit of the cremation of Sam McGee, and then told us he could do the rest of it, but it would take a while. Uh, so, but uh, the, the two stories that stood out to me, and he, he may have told these to some of you, so pardon me if, if any of them repeat. Uh, he, he liked to tell stories about himself at his own expense, where usually the stories uh, uh, were at his expense, but generally uh, credited uh, Annie. And one of the stories he told was about a dinner that he attended, uh, and at the dinner, uh, the person introducing him, uh, and fortunately for me, I, uh, nobody was tempted to do the same tonight, went on and on and on uh, in the introduction about Senator Glenn being the war hero and the astronaut and the senator and, and all the different ways in which he had contributed uh, to, to uh, uh, the fineness of this nation. And it finally closed the introduction at some length that I think he said it was longer than his speech and said, you know, there's very few true American heroes, uh, but, but I want to introduce to you Senator John Glenn. And on the way home from the dinner in the car, he said he was thinking about the introduction, and he happened to say to Annie, he said, you know, he said, uh, that's really true that there are not that many true American heroes. She says, you're right, Buster, and there's one fewer than you think there is. <laughs> <laughs> so those, those are the kind of stories he liked to tell. But the other story he told that I appreciated, I was told tonight that he's, he's now been... Uh, He's had withdrawn from him the privilege of flying his own plane, which is something he did back and forth to Ohio quite a bit, uh, particularly back when I was uh, working in his office, and I know ever since, uh, and I'm sure that, that hit him pretty hard. But uh, he was saying in, this is 2010, so he would have been, what, about uh, 89 years old at that point? Uh, I, I was asking him because I decided in, it was in between days and I'd been out on the, on the road with him the day before and I'd realized I, I knew a lot of things about him but I didn't know everything about him so I thought in this day and age I could look him up on Wikipedia and actually really get all the scoop and the skinny that I didn't necessarily have. And it talked about in particular in between his, his service in the war uh, he, he did a lot of work uh, on land speed uh, uh, work in the Bonneville salt flats and, and dealing with some of the uh, uh, military equipment in that era. So, so I, I somehow happened to ask him about motorcycles. And, uh, you know, I said, I just assumed we got to talking, and he, he liked speed of all kinds. And uh, I somehow got to ask him about motorcycles, and he says, he starts shaking his head, and he says, uh, he says, I, I told Annie we ought to get ourselves a couple of motorcycles, he says, and she won't do it. He says, I told her we'd just get one motorcycle for me and we'd have a little sidecar for her, he says, and she won't do it. He says, I told her, you've lost all your spirit. So anyway, she always has had the good sense, apparently, in the uh, relationship. Uh, and, and frankly probably has a lot to do with the fact that he's still around despite his daredevil recklessness uh, in not just his early days but his middle days and his later days. So I, I just truly admire uh, the man. I'm, I'm so pleased and I think we're all so grateful that he's decided to put so much effort, time, and his own uh, reputation uh, on the line with the Glenn School at Ohio, the Ohio State University. Uh, I could not be more uh, uh, grateful uh, and appreciative to uh, to have a chance to receive this award. I'm sorry not to see him in person, but I will try to see him soon. And I, and I just want to thank uh, everyone associated with the uh, school for what you do, for inspiring and bringing along new crops of young people with an interest in and a passion for and an appreciation for leadership and public service. Uh, and I'm glad to still have the chance to do that work myself. It, it, it gives real meaning uh, to my life. So thank you so much.